The oldest type of magic among mortal kind is alchemy, and the oldest type of that is cooking. Culinary magic has fallen from favor, but who doesn't know the tale of enchanted food or a candy home, a witch with a magic cauldron? The magic is ancient and as highly guarded as any other unique technique, and as long as there have been secrets, there have been those willing to take them. Two masters have combined their efforts, a baker and a confectioner. A competitor wants their prized recipes, and optionally their destruction. Welcome to Corporate Espionage the Game! There's just something fun about trying to get through a place unnoticed, knowing at any time everything could go wild. At the same time, it's easy to just boil this down to a series of stealth checks, or more accurately won because the paladin failed, and now you're beating up commoners for money. Well, I have a better idea. The best part of a stealth mission is the party thinking creatively, whether they're trying to get through the place, or just trying to get out of whatever mess they created. Therefore, we're going to try to keep them in that state. For my stealth missions, failure does not end your ability to sneak through. For example, in this dungeon, failing to stealth will put that room on a and the defense for the room will be deployed. The bakers in the next room will be alerted and harder to sneak past, but they also have a quota, so they're gonna keep working. If the party sneaks through despite being at disadvantage, wherever they go next is not going to be alerted. This raises tension without making them unable to recover. Of course, we'll also be throwing in some alternate routes to make sure the less dexterous members are still included. The easiest way to explain this is by doing it. I'll be using a level 4 party, but it's easily modified for any low to mid level party. You'll find all the custom monsters I'm using in the description, and suggestions for official monsters to use in the sidebar in case you can't use my PDF or you just find the books easier. Anyway, time to start baking and entering. There are three ways to enter the workshop. The main entrance storefront, the cooling vent, and a back way for freight. The two workshops get along, but they won't alert each other if something's going on. The store actually has two entrances, one to the bakery and one to the confectionery, with an entrance to each behind the counter. Of course, the problem is that there are employees behind that counter. Two are prepping orders and not really paying attention, but the cashier is attentive and perceptive. In fact, her only flaw is that she does not care about any of this. It's not too hard to distract her or bribe her. In fact, as long as you aren't incredibly incredibly obvious. I'm just gonna pretend like I didn't see you. I am not getting between a bunch of armed mercenaries and their goal when there are actual guards here to do exactly that. If they choose the bakery side, the next room is the cooling room. With all the bakers putting pies and pastries away, getting through the racks will be difficult, but there is an alternative. There's a vent system leading to the next room and outside. Anyone who hears them will think they're just runaway food as long as they don't talk, but they will have to actually get through the food that lives there. Maybe a few crawling bear claws or a swarm of old pumpkin piters. Stuff that's easy if it wasn't for the fact that they're squeezing through a vent. If the employees are alerted, they will ask the party to leave. If the party refuses or gets violent, they'll scramble for the next room screaming. And that is actually an issue, because the next room is where they package large orders for transport, put together by gingerbread minotaur, who will charge if the party's noticed. Your players can try to creep around the perimeter, or they can walk behind the stack of boxes on the left wall. Of course, the issue is that there's a gap in that wall so the minotaur can throw their trash away in the pit. They aren't going to look that direction, but a party member going through is getting pelted with trash. Make a few attack rolls for minor bludgeoning damage. Now the Minotaur won't alert the next room if they fight, but if a baker comes through here and sees the party fighting or the bodies of the Minotaur, they will. Those bakers will be coming from the next room, which is the main bakery. Fresh buns are ushered onto trays, a giant cinnamon roll is being played music while it's iced, and all sorts of pastries and cookies are being made from dough carried up from other floors and from the back. You can try to sneak in through the chaos, but it's not the only way. The walls and ceilings seem to be covered in a pine lattice, hardened with age. A very athletic person could clamber up and climb along the tall ceiling, or creep through a maintenance gap behind the ovens. Whatever happens though, do not get caught. Everyone will start to panic, the cinnamon serpent will uncoil and attack, and a flood of fresh and frustrated bread will pour out of the oven. Or in other words, a swarm of hot crass buns. The food will attack anything it can see, and any baker who doesn't return to their job will alert the back room or the minotaur, whichever direction the party didn't come from. The back room is for storage. There's a big door where sacks of ingredients are brought in from the outside. This is the first way your players may have thought to infiltrate from, but we're probably turned off by the lizard folk. Yeah, this one's actually serious, it's not just a pun. They get paid in all the food and shelter they could ever want, and all they gotta do is not around and stab things that try to get close without a uniform. This is the best job ever, they're not going to be bribed, though they will run at low health. Of course, their job is to protect things from getting in, so if the party's already inside, they do not care. Sneaking around is trivially easy, as having the guards around makes everyone relax, even if they really shouldn't be. Oh, and by the way, this was the hard way. If the party came through the confectionery door instead of the bakery door, it's just a storage room. If they aren't trying to make noise, nobody's going to come in here except the shop workers, and as I said, we don't care. Past that is the summoning room. Workers summon 
brown cows from the fields using a permanent teleportation circle. They're milked for their chocolate milk and then returned to the field. Easiest way to sneak there is just use the cows. Sleight of hand could free them, or you could scare them to rile them up. Of course, if the party is caught, the next room is alerted, which is an issue because that's the chocolate room. Huge vats of chocolate milk are being reduced and spun to separate the chocolate and fat from the water, a process controlled by a water elemental desperately trying to get all this impurity out of itself, one which will also try to get the adventure impurities out of its factory if alerted. If they haven't been alerted, the party could throw something in the vat or tip it over and run through the chaos unimpeded, or just slip around the cooler where they harden the chocolate if they could take the cold. With that floor covered, we go up or down. If you go down on the left side, you'll find a like button, which you should press and leave a comment if you're enjoying. But if the party goes down on the left side, what they'll find is unnerving dark. If the party lights a torch, they'll struggle to find anything. There's a terrible slurping sound in the dark, but they'll have to run to catch it. That won't happen though, because your party all has dark vision and they're trying to hide. So surely they'll enter this without the light it fears. In that case, they'll find the place empty except a ravenous amount of dough. Every type of bread you can think of all marbled together. Workers come down here every few hours to rip it apart, but without the light it fears, the yeast beast will feast. It's an ooze, regenerating unless hit with fire or radiant damage, though flame will increase its AC for a moment as the bread bakes. Oh, and this is absolutely the wrong way, but there is an alchemy jug in here to provide it water, which is easily stolen. I'd also let a player bottle a piece and keep it as a pet if they want. Now on the right side, they'll find a mine. Kobolds are hard at work carefully mining rock candy stalagmites. There's plenty to hide behind, but the kobolds' ears are always scanning for the sound of a rock fall, and footsteps are very close. With a performance check, a party member can match their footstep to the beat of the pick, or use a religion check to recognize the pattern of the old mining hymn they're swinging to. If the party is noticed, they'll run into tunnels screaming. One round later, stalactites will fall, requiring a dex save to avoid a few bludgeoning damage. The ground will also become difficult terrain, and the bears will be released from the next room. Yeah, I said bears. Gummy cave bears. Or black bears, brown bears, whatever type of bear you think is right. Their attacks do bludgeoning damage, and they all have different colors. If the room is entered without the party getting caught, they'll find only one bear is awake. They can calm it or quietly take it out before it wakes the others. If nothing else, the door is closed. They can just run to the next room. And the next room is the most terrifying of them all. The accounting team. Yeah, I know. It's a weird place for them. They keep bringing that up in meetings, but why listen to a goblin? They'll know the party's coming because they put an alarm spell on the bear room, but they'll relax as soon as they see it's not their boss. In fact, they'll even warn the party about the next room. It's a hallway with a guardian golem. Boss lady says it's unkillable, but they're pretty sure it's just annoyingly persistent. Oh, and watch out for the four in front of the vault door. It has a ward on it with a curse. Reduce the dexterity of anyone who touches it. Unless you're a goblin. It's rigged to explode goblins. Go rob the place blind. Serves her right. Maybe toss a few coins their way so they can make sure the workers get paid if she takes it out on them. But that's only if you want the gold. That's not actually the recipe vault. This is where they keep backup equipment and that week's profit. And because this next part's optional, we can make it tough. That guardian golem they went on about is entirely made out of candy. And it is a hulking brute. The main body has hard candy scales. The arms are massive lollipops pops and is bound together with licorice muscle. The trick of the fight, as the goblins hinted, is that it will not stay down. If it does go down, it immediately comes back as two large golems, their licorice organs binding around the limbs to form rhinoceros with stick horns. And if those die, they're replaced by medium golem, lollipop bodies with licorice limbs, stick figures ready to tussle. Hopefully by the time they're done, they'll forget about the curse in front of the door. The goblins were correct, by the way. It has an arcane lock and screams when they touch it, but the goblins still don't care. Behind it, they find a thousand silver, four thousand copper, four 42 gold, 2 potions of animal friendship, 2 alchemy jugs that only make flavored milk, and a bag of beans. Now if you're looking for the right vault, that's upstairs. That's just past the pastry field. Cookie Dough and Cookie Stag graze on chocolate grass. The walls are once again lined with pie crust, but fresh this time. Giant piters of different flavor line the walls. The break room is at the nearest wall, and the murmur of people enjoying their lunch is audible. Nobody in this area cares about the party, except for a tiny little pup cake so happy to make a new friend. Too happy. It will get the attention of its mom, a chocolate lab, and she does not like the party being anywhere near her pup. Some animal handling or friendship might calm her down if you aren't able to avoid her gaze, but otherwise her barking will attract the candy unicorn. Unfortunately for them, this type of unicorn does not care about their alignment or their goal, and will try to gore them. Ignoring that little room in the corner where they butcher food animals, the only doors left lead to a garden. Actual normal plants grow here. If you want danger, you can include a shambling mound, reskin the vines as licorice, and take out the lightning power. Personally though, I give them a chance to breathe. Or more accurately, watch them panic while they try to find the trap. Either way, all that we have left is the vault and the chicken room. There are chicken everywhere here. They aren't cramped, it looks like a cross between a wizard tower and a tiny apartment complex, with see-through tunnels everywhere like a playground. They also will not shut up. They're singing, and that's actually the key. There's a hidden door in this room, but from here on out, everything is under both forbiddance and guards and wards. No divination magic, no planar travel, no teleportation, and the hidden door has a minor illusion and arcane lock. 
It's able to be found with a good enough investigation, by touching a wall, or recognizing the chickens are all clucking parts of a song at random. Playing or singing to them will cause them to harmonize, and everyone who sings along becomes immune to the spells. The locked door will become unlocked, the illusion will be dropped, and the webs on the three flights of stairs down will part. And there it is, the vault. Brick wrapped in lead, wrapped in iron. Who needs Mordenkainen's real estate when you can just be prepared? The door isn't even trapped. The wizard had full faith in his chicken key and his finest creation. Oh right, I almost forgot to mention the giant guardian. It's a shortcake with a strawberry muzzle. It's also 10 feet tall and violent. If the party gets it low, they find out it's mythic. It'll bounce back to full health, the strawberry seeds opening into hundreds of eyes and the strawberries on top erupting out into vines. Phase 2. If they manage to beat it, they find the vault is mostly empty. Just a pedestal with a couple recipe books. Take it back to the quest giver for the reward. Now that's an overview, but if you're running a heist, you'll need to think on your feet. Your players will come up with far more than I ever could. Maybe they ask if there's a tour of the first floor, letting them look ahead or try to sneak away. Maybe they try to just run through, seeing if they can cause enough chaos to cover their escape. Or maybe they get to the basement and they're just having a rough time, they are lost, and you decide the recipes in the gold vault. This whole thing is a setup for crazy party shenanigans, so let them have their fun and be ready to fire back. And that'll do it. Special thanks to my coffee supporters. Thanks to them, I can hear out of both ears now. I can't put an actual link in the video yet, but it's in the description if you want to pitch in. No pressure though, I'm here either way. Class dismissed!